Joe Nichols. I am the uh, studio director of Capcom Vancouver. Looks like Obscurus was here. I sure cleared out in a hurry. Yes, I know where I'm headed next. So when you set out to make Dead Rising 4, what were the kind of core things that you knew you wanted to kind of evolve or build upon from the previous games? We wanted to take things like zombies for one. We've always been known for the horde game, so we wanted to make sure we gave a, a better variety of zombies. So we have three different levels of zombies. We have the horde, which are like the cows. Yeah. Um, and then we have the, the crazy ones, like the fresh infected and like the mad cows. Yeah. Uh, and then we get up into uh, what we call the evos. And they're the ones that are uh, smart. They work in packs and uh, they're a real challenge to take on. Um, sort of like the raptors from Jurassic Park or wolves kind of thing. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure we really did a number on the zombies. Um, and we wanted to do a number on, on the combos as well. Um, now we've always had combos in the game. We've had combo vehicles and combo weapons. Um, but now you're able to combo yourself. So we've given an exosuit, which is not actually the combo, but we give you an exosuit which lets you power through and punch cars and tear parking meters out of the ground and traffic lights down and that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's the combos that you actually put on top of the, um, the exosuit. So um, we have uh, a couple that we've been talking about. One of them is, uh, is the, basically you go to a, you get a frozen drink machine, like a Slurpee machine. Yeah. And of course you're gonna combo that and put it on and it shoots snow cones and it sends uh, Slurpee tornadoes out and sucks people up into the, into the air and whatnot. Um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you're comboing yourself. Um, and then because it's the 10th anniversary of Dead Rising, uh, we wanted to, to go back to Willamette where it all started. And we wanted yeah. to go back with Frank West and we wanted to bring the photography back into it. And so the camera is used all throughout the game, both to document and uh, solve the mystery, but also do some goofy stuff like uh, sure. doing selfies and whatnot. How does the kind of dynamic of the game uh, change then with these new zombie types coming in? Do, do you find that the dynamic has shifted a bit or are you just kind of, I suppose you've got to rethink the way you play, right? Yeah, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why we give you different weapons to combo and power up because the challenges are different as you go through the game. Yeah. So um, if you go into the, the horde, I mean the horde is the horde. You can pretty much mash your way through a lot of that stuff. But then when you add in the fresh infected guys, they're the ones that'll chase you. You yeah. can't go stand on a car or climb up on something because they'll climb up and get you. So you have to make sure you're prepared for that. And of course the evos are really tough and they jump around from building to building and they, they bark out orders to some of the horde to get you to uh, uh, defend against them, so it's a bit of a different experience. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that we've done in the game that's uh, that also quite different, we have like a dynamic encounter system. So um, you can have a bunch of survivors in a, in a store, they're holed up in a store in the mall, and they're shooting out, out of the store at either zombies or other survivors or the soldiers. So, um, and that'll happen in the mall from time to time, and it won't happen in the same place, or it may not happen at all depending where you go. So it's really dynamic. And the other thing that we put in the game is there's survivors in the game that when you help, and you, you help them survive, um, they'll give you something, they'll drop loot, and they'll, they'll reward you for doing that. Right. But you can also watch the mayhem take place in front of you and do nothing. So you can see a, fresh, a freshly infected zombie chasing down a survivor, and you could go, yeah, I'm just gonna let that happen. Watch it happen, they'll get bitten, and you can sit and watch them turn into a, a zombie then, and then they'll both come after you. So right. um, a lot of dynamic stuff that's happening in the project. Yeah, you mentioned the dynamic encounters. If they pop up kind of randomly, is it conceivable that one person could see one mission and the other person might not, not necessarily get that mission? Yeah, well, well there's still, we have still have the set missions in the game, but you will still see these things absolutely pop up from time to yeah. time in different locations. So I could walk down an alley or the street five, six times, never see anything. The next person could walk down and see three things happen there. Right. And it could be anything from a random encounter or to people shooting each other, you're caught in a firefight. Because we want it to happen in the game, even if you don't walk down the street, you'll hear stuff going on throughout the world. What kind of uh, other stuff can the exosuit do uh, beyond being able to combo with different items? Um, are you talking about any other combos yet or is there just a couple that you're sharing with us? We're just talking about a couple. Um, you know, what I can give you kind of a hint at, there's, uh, there's a number of combos that you can do on the exosuit. One of them is a military version and that's really devastating. Yeah. Um, one is a, uh, taking your, your exosuit and comboing it with a classic Capcom arcade machine. I'm not gonna tell you what happens there, but it's awesome. Um, and the fact that the exosuit is, uh, makes you much more powerful, it lets you clear things out of the way that lets you discover more stuff. In the presentation that I saw yesterday, you said something along the lines of, um, if it's stupid, we should definitely do it. How fun is that 
from a game design perspective, when you guys are meeting up and you're discussing these ideas, how enjoyable is that coming up with that yeah, stuff? Yeah, when we say it's stupid, you know, there, there's a fine line between stupid, fun, and stupid, not fun, right? right? So we make sure, it does, is this fun, right? Yeah. Um, and so when it came to making combo weapons, uh, the design team back at, at work, they, what they do is they kind of figure out what is the desired outcome we want to have from a weapon first, and then we kind of work backwards from that. Um, and because we've, you know, the, the studio's been around and done so many Dead Risings, we've really got to reinvent the wheel with a lot of the games, a lot of the combos that we do, right? Um, and, uh, but what made it fun and, uh, and a different challenge was because this is set on holiday, right? It's winter setting, it's, it's the Christmas season, and there's, there's, there's Christmas ornaments and lights and, and elves and candy canes involved, and so yeah. that kind of opens up a whole bunch of stuff. And so, you know, we look at pop culture a lot and, and try to find out what's happening in pop culture and, and kind of draw back. What would be really fun? Well, you know, if, if, you, if you had a candy cane crossbow, that would be pretty funny to see yeah. a zombie loaded up with candy canes staggering towards you. That's the kind of stuff that we've done. I imagine that there's a kind of hardcore kind of uh, selection of fans who look at these new Dead Rising games and see them as a bit more accessible, a bit more immediate to play. Do you find there's a balancing act trying to please those kind of hardcore fans who really love the time constraint stuff and yeah. the kind of, I mean, I found the controls a bit fiddly in the first one right. and, you know, uh, and kind of balancing but then refining the gameplay for, you know, to kind of broaden the audience a little bit? Yeah, well, the, you know, the design team back uh, that, that, that has been working on Dead Rising uh, for a long time, you're absolutely right. You're never going to make everybody happy. It's yeah. not possible to make everybody happy. Um, there's some things that people are passionate about and, and some, some people that just don't care about the same stuff. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of market research. We do a lot of focus groups. And every single thing that we put in the game, uh, we've worked really closely with our partners at Microsoft. And, and they've given us access to uh, a lot of uh, uh, consumer research and a lot of people to come in and play the product and have been doing so for months and months and months. Yeah. And, and, and we look at all the information that comes in. We try to tailor it uh, to as many people as we possibly can. Sure. Um, and so Dead Rising is the kind of game you can play your way. Um, if you want to get, if you want to be a completionist and find everything and, and go through that world uh, and, and go after the hardcore stuff, you can do that. But if you want to have a, an easier experience, you can kind of play it that way. Right. You'll just miss out on a lot of stuff. Um, and so, again, it's one of those things where you can't make everybody happy. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, working with our partners at Microsoft, they've been really great because we've had access to so much great research and people coming in, yeah. and, and we've been listening to what they've been, they've been saying, and we've been trying to tailor the experience for, for as wide an audience as possible. Right, does that mean the same safe system from the previous uh, game is it's going to be the same. Uh, no, actually, you don't have to go to the bathroom to save, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we've we've made stuff like that a little bit easier. Uh, so I'll give you an example of something we've made much easier that everyone seems to like yeah. um, is the combo system. So when you find the blueprint, you know, you still have to find the blueprint to make the combos, but um, you don't have to go to a workbench and do it. Yeah. Um, you can combo on the fly. So once I've got the ingredients for the recipe, if I find the stuff that goes in there, it says, "Hey, do you want a combo right now?" Yeah, I would, because I don't want to have to walk over and find that to yeah. do it. You know, uh, maybe some hardcore fans will wish they had to walk over and do it, but the majority of the people say, no, I just want to get quick to the fun, let me push the button. Yeah. Um, and the challenge is too, is, is Dead Rising is a game that has been around for a long time, that has evolved through the years with different yeah. characters and different settings and whatnot. Um, and a lot of the people that are going to be playing this game um, may have only played one Do Dead Rising before or may have never played Dead Rising yeah. before. So we have to be able to give something that's as widely appealing as possible. And I suppose refinements as well, like being able to just hold the trigger and pull like a, you know, a ranged weapon out. That's part yeah. of the refinement and stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, it's one of the, the happy accidents that we came across. We wanted to come up with a new inventory system, and the whole reason we did that was because we have so much stuff in the game, and we didn't have enough inventory. We actually didn't have enough buttons for it. Yeah. And so what we did is we came up with a new system of inventory that you still have a wheel to go around, and you cycle through with a shoulder button, um, but we wanted to have a quick access to weapons, right? And you just tap the D-pad, uh, left, right, or up, yeah. Um, and, uh, and you get the weapon you want really, really fast because when you're in the middle of it, the last thing you want to do is like, oh, great, now where's that weapon? I got boop, 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 you got to find it and then yeah. the next thing you know you're getting attacked. Same thing with food. We completely changed food. You still find the, the food that you need to, to, uh, you know, to get your health up, but rather than stop and going through a cycle and finding my cheeseburger and eating it, um, once you've got your food loaded up, you'll see the little icon on the bottom of the screen that'll say you've got food there and then a quick tap down on the D-pad, bam, you can eat it because 
it's not actually fun rummaging through your backpack trying to find a cheeseburger while you're trying to save humanity while zombies are attacking you want that part to be fast yeah. and stuff like that is some of the refinements we put into the product so beyond all that stuff what do you feel are the kind of key lessons that you've learned from making the previous dead risings you know i think um we wanted to have a better story. We wanted to have a deeper story. We wanted to give people challenges um, uh, and missions that were different than the ones before. Yeah. Um, we wanted to really work on um, making um, deeper character development for the other characters in the game. And we've got a lot of really great characters in the game that we're happy to, uh, to introduce people uh, to uh, down the road. Um, we want the missions to not feel like fetch quests all the time. Yeah. Because so many products come out and you play them, it's like, um, how long is your game? It's like, well, if I didn't have to go fetch something and take it from point A to point B, and when I get to point B, they said, oh no, you forgot this, no, take it to this person. That's not fun. And so we've eliminated the back and forth of all this stuff. Um, and then really, you know, we have all these expressions. We have like, how many smiles per hour can we get out of this game? And we've been watching people play the game here at Gamescom. And a lot of people bring GoPros and they set it up to film themselves. And we just watch their reaction when they play the game, when they have, you know, a crossbow with Roman candles and zombies are flying everywhere and if they're laughing and having a good time then we know we're doing the job right um, and uh, you know so that you know that that's kind of where we'd focus on so uh, what's your favorite weapon at the moment my favorite weapon is something called the Gandalf right. as opposed to an unknown wizard um, and what the Gandalf does is um, it's a combo weapon that's got a garden gnome affixed to a giant magic staff and um, and it shoots garden gnomes, and they you know they laugh and scream as the garden gnome gets projected down and explodes and hits the zombies. But then when you powered up that thing with enough uh, of your hits, then you do the move and you 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 bang the staff on the ground like you were saying you shall not pass kind of thing. And all these garden gnomes come out of nowhere um, and they parade off and they march and attack the zombies in front of you and then they explode. And it's nice. it's ridiculous yeah. and it's kind of funny and I don't care if it's realistic because everyone that's played it goes, oh my god, I love that weapon, yeah. right? It's just fun and we have yeah. dozens and dozens like it. Also, the psychos are different this time around. You don't call them psychos anymore, right? Yeah, you know what? The last game and working with our partners at Microsoft, making sure that uh, that we were listening to what people were saying, um, it's, you always want to make sure that the characters feel like they belong in the world. And because we spent so much more time working on the story in this game, we wanted all of the um, uh, all of these psychos, characters, whatever you want to call them, to feel like they lived in the world and not be placed in there because it's a video game. And so um, they're still as tough and they're still as twisted, um, but they have a reason to be there in the story, right? So we focused on making sure that, you know, like some of the villains that you're going to fight, fight in the game, they were part of Willamette and they've either snapped or what have you. And so they're still a big part of the game. We just treat them a little differently. Dead Rising 4 is available on December 6th on Win 10 and Xbox One. And uh, there's a lot of pre-order incentives available now as well. So we uh, hope you go out and get it.